building a business in speaking sustainably, part two. We talk about speaker business builder, how to be fit for the future in professional speaking. Hello and welcome back, Chris Davidson. Thank you, Niels. So here we are, last time we talked about opacity, and you said part two of the system, how to build a sustainable speaking business is system engagement. What do you mean with that? So moving from opacity to system engagement, how does that work? Yes. So last uh, last week we were looking, weren't we, at the at the um, the different stages of yes. uh, that a website can exist in opacity, and then it moves through to system engagement. We talked about how to recognise that a site is in opacity. Um, so how would I know that my site were in system engagement? What does that mean, Chris? You you know you invented the label. What does it mean? Um, a site. You would know that your site or suspect that your site was in system engagement when your credit card starts taking a beating. Now, what mm -hmm. do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that you have a site that is in opacity and you start doing a lot more research. You start writing a lot more. You start recording more videos. You start putting more content onto the site. The site starts getting bigger. You start doing search engine optimization research and all the rest of it. And you start building up traffic. The site starts becoming noticed. And you say, okay, well, hang on a minute. What can I do to, to engage these visitors? Because I don't really know who they are. What can I do to engage them? So... We talk about a um, classic one in the in the CATS community, consultants, authors, trainers, speakers, is we have some kind of a lead magnet, some kind of a, a PDF report maybe. Um, now, I'll come back to that uh, in, in a couple of minutes because I think PDF reports are losing their traction. But classically, mm -hmm. there's been uh, the idea of um, I'll give you a PDF report on, uh, on my market in exchange for a name and email address. That would be the classic uh, lead engagement process, wouldn't it? Um, mm -hmm. And that's your first bit of what I call system engagement because at that point, that act of engagement is being driven by a system. It's not really driven by a human being. It's driven okay. by a system. At that point in time, the visitor to my website doesn't really know who Chris Davidson is. Mm -hmm. He or she doesn't know me. Uh, she's looking around the website and she says, what does this Chris guy do? Oh, he builds websites and stuff. Okay, oh, that's interesting. Oh, well, I'm not quite sure whether I should trust him or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, he's got, a, he's got a report here on this, that, and the other. That looks quite interesting. Is it, is, it worth me, is it worth my while giving him my name and email address in exchange for that report? So that's the first bit of systems engagement. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I said I'll come back to, to PDF reports, and I will do in a minute. I just want to go a little bit further. Uh, with, because the, the, we now see lots of other systems coming into the marketplace. And these are all systems that people put onto their sites in order to attract different levels of engagement. They are giving their visitors opportunities, different opportunities to engage with them. So for example, another classic engagement tool would be online chat. Mm -hmm. You would have a certainly you have online chat if you're delivering an online service, yeah. but it's it's not quite so necessary to have online chat if you're a consultant or an author or a trainer. Yeah, but why not? Better. But why not? You know why not? Why not have it on? Why what do not? You think of chatbots. What do you think of these automated artificial intelligence um, text pieces? Uh, okay, the chat the chat robots. Um, mm -hmm. I'm. I think they've got a way to go yet. Mm. I, I think I think chat is chat is very good. I think chat with a human being can be incredibly insightful, incredibly powerful, uh, and I'm all in favour of it. I think if it's a robot, I think you need to call it out up front as being a robot. Don't try and pretend to be a human being when you're not. I think that's a big mistake um, because it you know you just. It, things unravel pretty quickly, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think it, it's what I think is fair enough in advance of chats. If it's a, if it's a support 
type facility in advance of the chat um, when you're 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 asking your question and the the support facility comes back with some what they think is useful links in their knowledge base well that's perfectly reasonable that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do if they've got a big knowledge base um, if it's not if it's not an a chat facility, if it's, uh, you know, somebody like you, somebody like me, a, a consultant, an author, a trainer, speaker, um, offering online chat while he or she is in the office, well, why not just switch it on? Why Excellent. not switch it yeah. on and just, just, just offer another, because another, somebody, somebody might just want to pick your brains, you know? Mm. Why not let them do that? Um, but of course, that's another system that you have to pay for. It's another use of the credit card. It's another system that you have to interface with the system you've already got, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's another example of a system uh, engagement. Um, another example, of course, would be offering people access to your diary so that they can, they can book a, a, a meeting with you, whether it's a physical meeting or a Zoom meeting, whatever. That's another system that comes up. There are all these little systems um, that have, uh, you know, sort of exploded into the marketplace in the past five years or so. And mm -hmm. we're being encouraged to use them. So they are, when people start using them, I go, ah, okay, this is, this is systems engagement. Now, if we've got time, I just want to go back to this idea of lead magnets and, yeah. uh, and free reports and that kind of stuff. Um, I said that I thought that the reports were losing their attraction, and, and I think they are. The, the, the straightforward PDF report, I think, mm -hmm. is losing its attraction, un unless it's, it's really meaty. Unless it's really meaty and, mm -hmm. and is um, unique. Then, then I think you know you still you still have some credibility with that. Um, I think, in general terms, though, the concept of a PDF report has been a bit uh, a bit overdone by too many people. Yeah, it was misused by many people where you basically get, get a one pager with very yeah. general advice. But when it's meaty, that means it's a lot of work. Correct. It is. <laughs> that, okay. <laughs> or or uh, what I have discovered uh, that the word the tool is really useful. Mm -hmm. So so I, I have a, um, a, a thing called a presentation benchmark tool that I put on my Active Presence website. And the presentation benchmark tool was, uh, well, is, is uh, an Excel spreadsheet that people can download. Um, and it's 20 yes, no questions. Um, and uh, on the basis of those 20 yes, no questions, they get a percentage score for the effectiveness of their presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've hidden the formulae in the spreadsheet. Uh, and, uh, you know, each of the yeses and each of the noes is not the same weighting. So it's not, it's not necessarily easy to unpick the scoring system, if you see okay. that. Yeah. So that, um, that works really well. You know, I will get three, four signups a week of people that just come in and say, Oh, presentation benchmark. Well, that looks interesting. Mm. So that that's, I think if you can offer a, a, a genuinely useful tool to the community that you serve, I think that is a completely valid, useful uh, case for the concept of a, a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. um, but free reports, mm, I'm less impressed with nowadays. Okay, excellent. Very good. So that means people have to do their homework for, for these kind of reports, which means you might have a couple of days or weeks of work before you put something on your website, which you should call a free, no, not a free, which you should call a proper report. Well, that's right. Or... Or you 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 stake your claim to an area, um, and then you 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 just you you just keep issuing that report, which is what mm -hmm. I I started to do with the digital footprint survey. I tested it in 2014, tested the concept, concluded that there was indeed, from from what I could see, a need for such a survey. And since then, yeah. I've just been I've been on it every year. Every yeah. year, I send that report out. Yes, and I can say because I was one of the first people who purchased it is excellent, and I buy it every year. So uh, when when someone's interested in that, I can highly recommend this research. Excellent. So I think that's all we have to say about system engagement. Of course, when you have questions now about working together with Chris or you want to discuss that in more detail, uh, all of Chris' contact data are in the show notes. And of course, I'm going to put a link in there that you can see the digital footprint survey as well. And for today, I can only say, Chris, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.